Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be working on the skin tone and hair of this lady from that I printed and painted only using Green Stuff World Max acrylics. Green Stuff Max is a new formula as you can see here and it's really really good. I've been enjoying them a lot, much much better than the original Green Stuff colors. I encourage you to try them out but if you want to you can watch me paint this model in this video and I hope you will enjoy it. Let me know in the comments. So we started from a zenithal that would give us a good idea of where the light and shadows would be and then <laughs> simply going with red or brown we started sketching the shadows on the skin as you can see i'm only painting on shadow because i don't really need to base coat the entire skin tone after the zenithal the zenithal already tells me roughly but accurately where lights and shadows are if done well so why would i have to base coat the entire mini with it i can just use red or brown in the shadows of the skin and that's gonna give me enough of a shadow so I can work up the other colors on top of the white. With Elven Flash, I start sketching in the skin tone. I still have a bit of red brown on the, on the brush, but it's not really a problem. And uh, I do think I actually end up mixing with a bit of red brown in between because I felt like the color was too light. But in the, anyway, here, just over the zenithal again with the mid-tone color. So where the black was, we put the shadow, and where the gray-white was, we put the, the mid-tone. Okay, now I'm using Alvin Flash as a pure color for the mid-tone, but I do make a mix of the two to sketch the in-between color. I like blending through base coating, basically. I don't like spending too much time blending colors with glazes or other methods. I prefer glazing for other things. So in this case, I'm just mixing the two colors 50-50, the redwood and the, the Alvin Flash, to make an in-between color that I go and just sketch in, in place, between the two. So basically we have a, a mid-tone of light, so to speak, which will be the album flash. And then we have this mid-tone of shadow that will be the, the, the mixture. And then again, further remixing the color, which means this new mixture that I made, I add a bit of album flash to it and base coat the result to start the blending. You can see that it is pretty good blending. Like the, the colors work really well actually for this kind of thing, especially the skin tone color. I was really surprised by well they would layer on top of one another and give me some pretty clean blending out of the gate this didn't take me long at all and then back to pure album flash to just readjust the lights for example the knuckles and the, the elbow whatever i went over with the in-between color but i felt i wanted a bit more light i just reinforced with the album flash one more time You can see here that the color has been slightly thinned to get a bit more of a gradient as I paint it. But we're still working with pretty much base coats. The face unfortunately was a bit hidden by the hair. The camera angle I was using changed now, I do use a different one, but like at the time it was difficult to show the face. But as you can see, I'm just placing this mid-tone color on the cheekbones and the forehead and you know, all of the areas where I want to have some color from a skin that is in light leaving the other colors in the back you can blend in many ways in this case I, I mm, in attempted not really but like I, I did a small a small stippling to get the colors to to kind of soften a little bit more and give the illusion of a of a texture done with a realistic intention in mind because you know skin isn't just flat colors 
skin is very is very porous so the light will interact with it in a more dotty kind of way especially in light here we're just cleaning up the color you can see that the arm is pretty much done Here I'm using, I think, an alite. Yes, I'm using an alite with banana split, I think. No, I'm not, I don't think, I, I'm pretty sure. Banana split has been added to this uh, color to push the light a little bit, at least on the face. And you can see that I'm still using the dotting technique, the stippling technique, to get a blend without actually having to work on a blend because the noise created by the dots will make it look like it has a blend, and then like glazing a little bit on top will adjust everything. If you do want to watch, watch me paint with these kind of techniques, I do have a Twitch channel where I stream pretty much almost every day. You will find it linked in the, in, the, in the comments, as well as a Patreon where I actually teach in-depth painting, such as this, but even better, if I can say. And you can check both out if you want. If you do enjoy this paint job, if you find it, that it's interesting to watch, check it out. The Twitch is a very nice place to be, and it's super chill and free especially, so you can just come and out whenever you're painting. And if you have question, I'll be happy to answer. But here you can see, just creating little gradients of colors and just using the resulting mixture, this time as a layer on top of the stippling that I've done to smooth it out and get it cleaned. And like the video is sped forward, but it's sped up, but it, it didn't take me that much time really to get this skin done. And here again with the banana split added to the elven skin you can see me that i am after getting the face right when it comes to light i usually always prefer working on the face first when it comes to blocking in the lights when i get that done i move to the rest of the skin and in this case and now that i know how much light i have on the face i can build the light on the rest of the model more more safely without fearing of over lighting the arm for example and ending up with a face that doesn't have enough enough light Like the blending throughout has been done by sketching in the color, like base coat or slightly thinner base coat, and then just mixing the new sketch, the new sketched base coat with the previous color, 50-50 roughly, and then using that new mix as a as a base coat again to mix. You can see that I'm doing it here. I'm just painting around the color with a roughly it's a base coat consistency. And again, stippling, because in light, I like to, to add some interesting colors, some interesting variation to the, to the gradients. I tend to find, personally, smooth blending to be a beautiful technique, but a bit far from reality. So I'm, I'm always looking for ways to make the paint job a bit more interesting when it comes to, you know, textures. You are not going to be able to see these textures from arm's length but if you pick up the mini and you observe it you're going to be able to find them in the paint job which is going to make it a little bit more interesting you know for somebody collecting the model for example and here with with a slightly lighter shadow color, which means the, the redstone with a bit of elven skin, I'm just cleaning up the shadows because, of course, you always start with very strong shadows, but you don't always need them. So it's a good idea to start with dark shadows because they give you contrast. But like as you build up, especially on the face, especially on a woman, you're going to find yourself with too much shadow. And rather than in trying to make it work, like you can simply clean it up. 
And here with the air, just Black Stallion with a bit of Turquoise added in to block them in. Just simple base coat. And then with a bit of white added in there, you can see it on the palette. I'm just sketching the, the first light on the hair. I really like painting hair in this way, vertical brush strokes. More or less fine, depending on how quickly I'm going with the paint job and what the quality is that I'm trying to reach. But generally speaking, it's always a vertical brush stroke because it follows the shape of the hair without interpreting every single strand of hair specifically, because doing that will make the hair look very fake, very plasticky and cartoony. If instead you kind of ignore the sculpt, at least at first, and you just play around with lines like this, you can see that it's already happening. It already looks like the hair are real because you, all of these little lines that I'm creating are making the hair look alive and, and more like there is a group of them rather than a block of plastic. And again, just simply adding a bit more white to the mix, slowly building up. So of course, if you want it a more clean effect, you can slow build up. If you want a strong effect, you can just quick build up like I'm doing here. You have to imagine that, consider that this paint job, this entire bust was painted in three hours. From start to finish, the entirety of it, I was trying to be on a time in a sense that I, didn't want, I couldn't spend too much time on it. I just wanted to use the colors, try my best with them and see what would, what would happen using them. And I'm actually pretty satisfied with the result for the time. The paints really, really act well. Then the Max series really, really performs well. I like them a lot. And here just going at the maximum areas of volume and blocking in the light to get it to be less, just like placed in. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you learned something about skin tones or how to blend in general and you have enjoyed it. As well, you can join me on Twitch or Patreon if you would like. We, I paint almost every day on Twitch and I have a lot of content on Patreon you can check out. There, they're in the comments. And that's it. Thank you so much. I will see you in the next video for the OSL.